All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about five key features of infrastructure as a code tools, no matter which category they fall into. So I've described just the category, five different categories of tools, and uh, it could, no matter which one it is, whether it is cloud provisioning or VM, pro VM provisioning tools, configuration management tools such as Ansible, Chef Puppet, uh, cloud provisioning can be Terraform, um, you know, configuration management I just described. It could be CI CD tools or it could be container deployment and, uh, you know, uh, managing or running your containers at scale as well, right? Tools like HAM uh, with Kubernetes, right? When you want to deploy your application with Kubernetes. All of these have certain features in common. And those are the features I'm going to talk about here. The number one feature, and this is common in every single tool that you would you know, see in this category, infrastructure as a code, is the declarative syntax. So we move away with these automation tools, modern generation automation tools, we move away from the how part and start focusing on what we want. It's like, I'll give you an analogy. If you want to build your house, on one hand, you have construction workers who know how to do things. They are the ones who are going to build your house one brick at a time. They know the procedure and they will do the procedure, all the hard work. On the other hand, you have an architect. Now, if you look at, think about the role of an architect, uh, he or she is not going to get into the how part, but focus on what part there. They are the ones who build the blueprint of your building or if your house. They're the ones who are going to envision, oh, this is how the, um, this building or this house should look like. This is where the hall is. This is where the kitchen is. This is where your parking is. This is where your porch is and so on and so forth. And they will write a, create a blueprint by defining the specification of each of that component and by stitching it together. And that's exactly what these tools, the new generation automation tools allow you to do. Focus on what you want and let the tool handle the how part. They provide an abstracted language. Uh, a language like YAML, for example, helps you describe the state of your, uh, let's say, infrastructure with Ansible, where you define, oh, I want this user to be present. I want this package with uh, this version to be present. I want uh, this file with these permissions, with this owner, and so on. So you just describe what you want and not bother about uh, the how part is taken care by the Ansible itself, for example, with its uh, modules and so on, modules infrastructure. So that gets translated into the something, the underlying code. So the underlying code is there, the scripts are there, uh, probably thousands of lines of code there, but what you write with these tools is using a simple declarative language, focusing on what should be the state of your infrastructure, and that's the key feature of every single automation tool. Number two is ability to store it as a code, which is great because then you can just revision control it, put it on, let's say GitHub, and you can use that code to recreate the same state of the infrastructure, maybe after six months down the line as well. Right? You can destroy it, you can recreate it, uh, you can take the same code, put it on a different environment, different cloud platform, different provider, whatever you want to do, uh, you can just do that very easily. It's not just about that, you can also, since it's all code, you store it in a revision control system, you can test it as well. And you can actually use some of the best practices that developers have, you know, been using for years and years, like, you know, a, a test-driven uh, development, for example, uh, ability to uh, do a pair programming, peer programming, however you want to do that. Uh, you can set some automated testing process and uh, you can do a lot of, you can use more sophisticated editors with auto-completion of code and IDEs and so on and so forth. So there are a lot of advantages of being able to write it and store it as a code, right? That's the second feature of these automation tools. Number three is item potence. A little complicated word, uh, but it's quite useful as well. Now, what is this item potence? Item potence is the feature which gives these tools an intelligence to know when to make changes, whether the changes are needed at all, and based on that, you know, manage your, the state of your infrastructure. For example, I ask 
Ansible to create a user. Now, if the user is already present, Ansible already knows. So it compares the code, the declarative code that I give it, the current state of the infrastructure. If it is the same, it doesn't need to do anything. So it compares that, right? If there is a drift, let's say the user is not there, it will go ahead and create it, bring it to the same level. If the user is there, but the properties are different, it will bring it to the policy that I write, the code that I write, the state that I want it in. So it knows when to take an action, whether to take an action, and what action to take. Sometimes it might be creating a user, sometimes it might be modifying the user, sometimes it might be updating the password, sometimes it might be deleting the user. So the appropriate action is chosen based on the current state. Current state? Yeah, that's the one. The desired state and make sure that the current state matches the desired one. And the ability to do that is sort of called as, we can call it as idempotence there, right? And with idempotence, you can also make sure that your code runs over and over again. Let's say Ansible keeps running over and over again. Only if there is a need, it will take some action. That was the second point. Uh, that now the fourth point that I want to make is when you write your infrastructure as a code, it is a self documented code basically it's a self document so you don't have to write additional documentation to understand and to describe what this code does or describe anything else at all because uh, it's a simple it's a code written in simple language it's a code written in declarative language so it is easy to read so if you look at the ansible playbook or Ansible role for that matter. If you look at Docker Compose spec, if you look at Kubernetes specifications, if you look at a hem chart, you can you can look at take any of these tools and just read it. It you are pretty I'm pretty sure that you can understand what's happening here. Right? So there is no need for additional documentation at all when you start writing your infrastructure as code. And the first, last point that I want to make is the ability to create generic code through templatization. So templatization is an important aspect of most of these automation tools. Uh, what I mean by that is you basically write the code in a very generic way. You describe, you know, uh, let's say I want to create a user. So I would just write a code to define that, oh, I have a resource which is user and I want to create it with certain properties. But I wouldn't, wouldn't write the properties in my code at all. So I would keep that in a template. So template is a structure of my code with properties removed. And instead of that, I just add some placeholders like template variables. And the actual properties are defined in another separate file. Now you separate your code into two parts here. One is a template, one is let's say generally a variables file or your properties file. Let's call it as properties files. And the advantage with that is once you do that, you can make that code generic shared with anyone. You don't have to bother about that because you know uh, there is nothing specific about your environment or your organization in there it's just a, as generic as the application itself is so if you're writing a uh, code for uh, let's say a role for an ansible role for apache that role is as generic as the application apache itself is which is open source and shareable and free to use for anyone and the best part about this again is you can use the code from the library. Let's say Ansible has this um, galaxy where you will find a lot of shared code available. You can take that, you can add just the properties. So your time is saved because you don't have to write that automation code. You just add your properties and you can also make it specific to each environment. So you have one property file for each environment and that way you can completely customize uh, the tweak everything related to your application, each of the properties and so on. So that's just fantastic feature to have. And that is typically a common feature when you look at Ansible roles, chef cookbooks, uh, puppet modules, um, ham charts for Kubernetes, all of them share this same feature. Now these are some of the key common features fundamental features of an infrastructure as a code tool. I spoke about five features here. Uh, first one was ability to write declarative code. Second one was uh, the ability to write code itself, which can be shared. Uh, third was uh, item post importance. Uh, item importance, that's difficult to pronounce always. Um, self-documentation, self-documented code, 
and fifth is templatization. So though that's about the key features of IAAC2.